these blue flashes in Japan's sky, you know, just flashing up. And what followed that was an earthquake. But today, more earthquakes follow that as a 5.7s hit. This is prompting the U.S. West Coast to prepare for these situations just the temp, uh, December 10th, as well as Canada looking into these situations as well. But before we get into everything and investigate the situation, we need to see what's happening. Wow, as you see that, what do you think is causing these lives? Give me earth energy or just say strange earth energy or strange. We're about to look deeper into that. And wait, um, do you want do you want to see this closer? Because I'm going to give you a closer look. I feel like a lot of you do. So look at that closer right there. Look at it. The glow right there. You can see it, it has these little patterns right there behind like i can see like these splicing looking patterns can you see that yeah that's very strange there this is this this is not the first time this happened in japan in 2011 this happened in japan as well um some people call these earthquake lights but we're about to look a little bit deeper uh into this situation let's read into it so mysterious flashes in the sky they've been reported for centuries they could be piezoelectric charges that release in the atmosphere and other geological processes, but what really causes this? Let's look into it. Scientists link them to rock stresses generating electric charges or ions through the exact cause is debated. Hmm. With evidence from ULF, ELF, radio waves often preceding events, suggesting a connection between crustal stress and atmospheric effects as seen in historical Japanese quakes. Hmm. Hmm. Hold up. So I'm, I'm going to take you into this really quick because, you know, ULF is uh, uh, ultra low frequency. And we know what that is. Again, I, I bet some of y'all are going to say that y'all think it's something else. So let's check this out. Earthquakes make waves in the ionosphere. Another signal to study. I'm going to show you this map really quick because apparently in California, and then we're going to get to the whole evacuation plan and everything else they've been looking at for the West Coast because since this has happened, it's been a very serious uptick on that level. So you want to stick around for that. So basically, if you look right here, they use these GPS stations to measure the ionospheric disturbances above the earthquake because the earthquake hits and they're saying they see infrasonic acoustic waves and they can use that with the line of sight from the satellite, the GPS receivers. And that's where apparently we get these glows that happen in the atmosphere and this was right before japan earthquake which a lot of people are saying that did somebody else do this is uh there some other involvement behind this and the question is right now we don't know that but apparently this is what you need to know right now in the live chat if you're seeing this in your area please let us know because this precedes an earthquake whether you think that is strange whether we think it's earth energy an earthquake precedes this event usually every time this glow emanates in the atmosphere. So the fact that they said radio waves, it makes me question a lot. And apparently this glow has been seen in California, too. They call it a mystery ghost light in California could reveal hidden earthquake risk. Scientists say these unexplained lights could be linked to the release of non-combustible gases like methane after minor seismic activity, say seismologist Susan Hull. So, again, let's move a little deeper here because with the light showing up, here's something else strange that happened today, December 10th, 2025. So instead of just that 5.7, we got that report. But what else happened is that it was a seismic like event reported today that didn't show up uh, officially. It says we are receiving unverified early reports of ground shaking possibly caused by seismic activity near uh 
Akita, Japan, December 10th. There are no details yet on the magnitude of the depth. Possible quake, if confirmed, we can expect more accurate data to emerge in the next few minutes. So we had a seismic like event that has not been confirmed. Very yet interesting once again, as all these things start to happen. Let's look at some of the situations as officials are warning of mega quake risk after the Monday tremor. So this has been a back to back. We've seen them hit Monday. We've seen them hit Tuesday. Now Wednesday, 5.7. And, and now we're going to be looking deeper into the West Coast because they're talking about these protocols that they're planning out as we speak. They already went through some of them. But they're actively getting a little bit more involved now that they see the damage and the mega quake signs that potentially could happen and unfold over these next coming days. Now, some people asking in the atmosphere, OK, are we seeing a lot of this energy occur because of the geomagnetic situation? That is one part of it. But the earthquake lights usually have their own situations that precede earthquakes that probably has a little bit separate event from the solar situation. So let's go into right now. Let's go into right now what they're talking about, because they're going to shut off the monitors in Alaska and that's going to affect the West Coast. And I'm going to show you specifically which ones are going to go dark because they did some already in this month. And now they're saying in January, there's other ones. So all the ones that are like pale blue, nine seismic stations on the map are expected to go dark due to the funding cuts. Again, you would say, well, the government back open. It don't matter. Still, they're going to do it. And all of them are next to the water, right? They're all next to where the water and the glaciers, all the baby blue looking ones is where it's going to be shut off at. And that's the areas where the tsunami risk is at. And that's where we're going to continue to watch. So what are they talking about here? Let's move into what they're talking about. How mega quake advisory in Japan following earthquake could impact U.S. West Coast. So when we look into this, they start telling us about how uh, evacuation protocols are going to be set. The National Guard is going to be um, active on the West Coast. And we'll just go directly into some of the situation here. Japan's government issued a mega quake advisory on 7.5 struck the country's northern coast Tuesday. Officials say worst case mega quake. In the Hokkaido region could produce waves approaching 100 feet in parts of Japan, causing nearly 200,000 deaths and damaging coastal communities. So Oregon's scenario has that an eerie echo of March 2011 magnitude 9.0 earthquake off Japan unleashed a tsunami that crossed the Pacific and sent waves into harbors along the West Coast. That event damaged docks and boats and produced strong, unpredictable currents. Recently explored by a major Cascadia tsunami would send evacuees over the mountains to central Oregon, straining housing and emergency services. A large Japan related tsunami would not trigger the same mass displacement, but it would test coastal evacuation systems, communication with tourists and the ability of ports to secure vessels and infrastructure ahead of time. So while, while we see all this occurring right now and it just acts in the chat, uh, have you seen? OK, somebody saying people witness a light blue in the sea just before the quake. What location? If you're telling me this, you need to be telling me locations that you're specifically speaking of right now. So, again, location, location, location. I keep saying that because when everything starts to occur, we're only going to have each other in this moment. So seismic shift. Let's go deeper into the situation that's most most likely this is Oregon, but it's going to unfold in California. It's going to unfold in Washington. It's going to unfold probably in Alaska. Let's read deeper here. Dan Norton with Lincoln County Public Health Emergency Preparedness and Response Team said the influx could strain resources across the region. There is an expected to be an exodus of people that would naturally move inland, Norton said. Being in Redmond area will likely see large increase in population. Airports will be busy. Vehicles will be moving resources. And there will probably be a significant National Guard presence to support the response. Upcoming installments in the series will explore the latest tsunami research, coastal preparedness, how evacuees might reach central Oregon and whether infrastructure and fuel supplies are sufficient. 
how local agencies plan to shelter and support displaced residents. So that's something right now that they're already speaking on and talking about. And that's going to be something that basically over these next weeks, you're going to see them start to talk about even more. So the fact that they're going to have these stations go dark, though, just makes it more ominous of the event to come. And so the earthquake lights that we're seeing right now and everybody tuning in, this is going to be something that we really need to pay attention to because this is going to tell us a lot about the atmosphere and the ULF. Let's let's go back to that because ULF and specifically, let's see what it said, ELF. So you got ultra low frequency and then ELF frequency. It's extremely low frequency. And I know people are going to say, well, you know who's doing that. But again, we don't know right now. We don't have any data or evidence to back up any claims that somebody is doing it. Trust me, though, if I find it, I will present it because I know in the chat, people are like, nah, man, I know it's them. I already know they activated it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, remember, we showed the study of UAF and that was just last month where they activated, I gave you the transmission notice. Now, the question is, is there some other activation going on that we don't know about? And that's the big question. Well, radar would tell us if that was happening. And that's what we have to study over the next coming days. So if you have evidence to provide that, that would be very important that you could. Uh, somebody says, I don't even envy those in the USA. going to be a great show on the 19th. Well, you're talking about what's coming through our atmosphere is in the 19th. A lot of people are looking at that, and that's going to be something that's going to transpire. We'll be covering all the information on those details. Uh, somebody says it's going to work out. Yeah, definitely. Like basically, when you look at this in the atmosphere again, once again, the epicenter hits right in the line of sight right above the epicenter where the earthquake strikes is where the atmosphere has this disturbance at. And it's like this piezoelectric energy disturbance, apparently because of the crust having a disruption in the hypocenter. So the hypocenter a little bit below the epicenter and then the seismic waves, and then you can get the tsunami and everything else happening. So that's why we're going to continue to watch this and then continue to give you more information. You can subscribe for that. Uh, somebody says you can match solar activity to EQS. Yes, you can do that. And we can give you more information on that. So this is going to be important, but what's in the fog while this is happening? What's in the fog? What's happening with that? And if you look down, like right below in the chat section of this video, you will see that I found confirmed evidence of studies that was done a few months before we started seeing all this fog. Am I tying it to that? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that that's going to be very important because it was hitting everybody across the West Coast, everybody on the East Coast, freezing fog, all types of stuff. But we've dove deeper into that to give you more insight on what's occurring in these areas. So as this continues to happen over the next days, course of weeks and months, this is going to be one of the scenarios right now that supply chains are watching closely. Governments are watching closely. Uh, you got this professor from uh, Japan and his university. They're watching it closely. So again, over these next few days, I would say, here's our big watch signs. Give me it right now in the chat. Are you going to watch the sky? Just say sky. If you're going to watch the sky for us, uh, we need people watching the ocean. Just say ocean if you're going to watch the ocean. Uh, we need people uh, just pretty much giving us alerts of booms. Say boom if you're going to do that. So give us like all that in the chat right now because new people coming in get a lot of information. There's that big crack you've seen on the thumbnail. Because the ground ruptured there because it's 5.7. I got skies coming in, ocean coming in. Good, good. So a lot of people are going to come back. We're an investigative community and we want to have all these eyes on the ground. Nebraska, all eyes on the sky, somebody says. Tell us your location too. What location you're going to be watching from after the video is over. Tell us that location as well. Then people can go in the chat and say, all right, I got some people here in California that's doing what I'm doing. People here in uh, Texas doing what I'm doing. I got people in Alaska doing what I'm doing. I have people in New York doing what I'm doing. So Florida, you know, Mississippi, wherever you're at, Arizona, 
all these areas like we need to be looking at this actively because again i told you somebody asked me uh will the fog descend across america like for the large miles like no that's not happening but if it does happen i will get it right away uh as far as a test on the fog i have only one person really serious that we're looking into that right now uh, i've gave them information the address how to store it so that's what we're looking at actively right now melbourne as well somebody sent sky melbourne victoria sorry not trying to leave y'all out canada as well you let us know uh what's going on in videos s jackson 2447 at gmail.com this is all for awareness not fear we're sharing out the official reports and also looking at eyewitness statements as we do this uh oklahoma mountains loud booms regularly with no official explanation so that's seismic like events sergeant saying sgt one one is saying right now so again give me more of that another person says sky in eastern washington state got you beautiful day in my area Great, great. If it's doing good, you're doing great. Keep that energy high. Don't let them get you down. All right. I'll be looking at the comments after the video is over. Everybody else should be doing that too as we arrive at these new events. Give us a thumbs up for the interaction and a share as well. I appreciate all of you. And remember, the videos on the left-hand side is highly important. 